So welcome everybody. This is Microsoft 365 and Power Platform, a community call with Microsoft speakers. Typically, we'll have a certain exception today, and I'll get back on that one in a second. Today is August 22nd, 2023, and this is the first time we're back from the summer vacation, uh, which was uh, from uh, July to this week. So we wanted to come back a bit earlier than previous years uh, when we waited until September. Uh, let's see how many people are able to notice that, uh, that the call is actually starting at this point uh, or this week and not uh, so we'll we'll have an impact on the attendance probably but we'll see how it goes anyway my name is Vesa Yuvonen I'm a principal product manager in the Microsoft 365 platform areas and today we have really really cool set of demos coming up after a typical update on what's happening within Microsoft and Power Platform sign. So first of all, uh, on the demo section, uh, we have Robert Schoen, uh, Shrusty uh, and Martin talking about uh, a life patent patent patient patient review, uh, which is a hack together uh, a solution uh, which they built on Spring uh, using a Microsoft Teams uh, technology. So it's a really, really cool uh, solution uh, created uh, for the B2C kind of a scenarios. And I'll let them to talk about it on that section. We'll get to the demos in quarter past. Then after that, it's going to be Luca and Alex and apparently me uh, doing an introduction on new features and capabilities within SharePoint Framework 1.18. So we're going to recap on what's there and uh, that's current Currently in uh, beta 5 status, uh, uh, a release candidate coming pretty soon on SharePoint Framework 1.18 and GA happening pretty soon as well. And then as the last demo of today, roughly quarter to uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, we have John Miller uh, representing the dev div, meaning the developer division. Uh, and he's going to talk about what's new in the Teams toolkit for Visual Studio 2020, uh, 2020, 2022. That's the right way of saying that. So that's basically within the Visual Studio, not in the Visual Studio code. And that's really the key difference in here. And he's going to cover the changes over there. Now, let's actually start going a uh, typical set of slides and recapping a few of the assets which are available. And then we'll go to the weekly news to get a mode picture and then the demos of today. First of all, uh, we do have our YouTube video channel where we publish all of our Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community videos. So the community demos, community call recordings, all of that is found from that one particular location. You should be subscribing there so you can easily follow up on all of the new stuff which is available. We do release a one video in every single day and business day within that channel. So a lot of, lot of cool stuff uh, uh, to cover. We also have our LinkedIn group, LinkedIn group uh, for this discussions and updates uh, is a way to engage with the community. Uh, well, we have a few other options as well. Uh, we have our open source assets in a GitHub. There's a lot of, lot of actually engagement in a GitHub. I think we had something like 12.6 million visitors, uh, sorry, views uh, within the last 365 days within a GitHub area. So that is a lot of, lot of engagement across the multiple different GitHub areas. We have a lot of samples available uh, through our sample galleries um, and the AKMS community samples is the easiest location to find all of them. Uh, uh, where we have a simple text box, you can find a relevant sample for you. And if you're wondering, there's too many URLs to remember. Actually, it's only one. AKMS Community and Home is where you find all of these assets from one centralized location. We do have quite a few community calls, uh, and we're now with this restarting uh, to Tuesday call and the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform with Microsoft speakers call every single Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. We have a lot of, lot of great stuff already queued up for upcoming weeks as well, and, and awesome stuff today. On top of that, we have the Power Platform monthly community call. If you're looking into Power Platform updates, uh, where we typically have community demos, office add-ins, monthly community call, where we have product group demos, so engineering-led demos. And then we have our Thursday series happening at 7 a.m. on every single Thursday. It's either the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community bi-weekly call or the Viva Connection and SharePoint Framework bi-weekly call. Um, you can subscribe on all of them. You can choose if you want to join all of them or watch the recordings. Easiest way to figure out what's actually getting presented is to sign up uh, for the meetup. So if you go AKMS forward slash community forward slash meetup, you will see the agendas getting published uh, roughly a week advance before the call actually happens. So it's a really, really convenient way to know what's actually being covered within the call. Now, you might be, you actually heard that some of the community demo uh, call demos are uh, supported or can be done by the community and we welcome you to do those demos. So the easiest way to learn 
what is the art of possible within the Microsoft Cloud is to watch other people to explain what they built and how they build it and what are the learnings and all of that. And that's actually what we want to embrace and what we want to see as well. So we welcome every single one of you within the call to volunteer at doing a demo. We can even help you to set up the demo. So if you have never actually done any of these demos uh, live or in, in these community calls, we can help you on getting started on there. Please sign up uh, at the AKMS forward slash community forward slash request and then demo. Now, related on all of the assets, we do have our Microsoft 365 developer program available uh, for you to take advantage. Uh, sign up there, you will get a free E5 developer tenant, uh, which is renewing automatically in every single 90 days. We also have a lot of, lot of learning, free learning material available in the Microsoft Learn uh, for Microsoft 365 and for Power Platform uh, extensibility. So low code, no code, and again, pro code options available. Now, we also have a lot of, lot of different podcasts and, and other uh, events available. So we have our Microsoft 365 PMP Weekly happening typically once a week. That's been on summer vacation, we would, and we will start that again in next week. We have our Mondays at Microsoft hosted by Caruana and Heather, which is more a business-driven uh, updates on what's happening uh, within Microsoft side uh, through the LinkedIn Microsoft community channel. We have the Power Platform Connections hosted by David Warner and Hugo Pernier, and then the Microsoft 365 Developer Podcast hosted by uh, Jeremy Fake, Paul Shefflin, or Aisha Bass. So a lot of, lot of uh, interesting assets available. And all of them, I think they will start doing executions again more frequently uh, now that we are past uh, the summer uh, season within the Northern Hemisphere. Now, I already mentioned the sample gallery. Uh, it's a great way of getting up to date uh, on the latest samples coming from Microsoft and from the community. So from a one centralized location, right now we have 1,690 samples. Uh, one other way of saying that is 1,690 plus samples uh, from uh, which is available from that location. And it's a really easy location to just use the text box uh, for your scenario. And you might actually find what's relevant for you. Uh, adaptive card samples, uh, Microsoft Teams meeting samples, uh, power platform samples, all from one centralized location. Really, really convenient. Now, as you find the sample, it might be in a GitHub, and you might be wondering, and okay, so this GitHub thing, I'm not sure how it actually works. How what do I do now? Well, luckily, we do get you covered with the Sharing is Caring initiative, and David is in a call to explain what that is all about. Yes, what is this hub of Gits you speak of, Vesa? Wondrous and magical. Well, friends, it is where all of our samples are living. And it can be a little bit unsettling looking at all those names like Fork and Blame and Raw. And what does those mean? Well, they mean something, and we're going to show and work with you on how to learn it together. Sharing is Caring is a session and a program that's here to provide hands-on guidance. That means that we are going to work together in a live session. It's a safe space, unrecorded, so you can feel free and confident to ask any and all questions you want. And we will work together. We've got one coming up next week on the Power Platform Samples Contributor. We've got more videos coming out soon. We're going to make some of these a little bit on demand for you uh, to take advantage of so that you can learn and contribute more in all the areas that you're so passionate about in the community. So please don't hesitate to sign up for that. You could do it. We've started setting it up via uh, Teams webinar, which means that you sign up and you immediately get the invite. You get reminders. It's fantastic. Now, as we move to the next slide, once you do contribute, <laughs> Once you do contribute, we want to recognize you for the amazing work that you do, and we're going to have some fun coming up the end of this season. Uh, you're going to see even our new PSL badge, Pumpkin Spice, a lot of commits, right? So we're going to have some fun with that. We're going to have some thematic badges coming up. We've got Hacktoberfest around the corner. Uh, we've got the season of getting, so be sure to keep an eye out. We do need you to opt in. If you want to get recognized, ak.ms slash community slash recognition, it's absolutely free. And we're excited to get uh, a little bit more fun involved with our recognition program this season. So thank you, everybody. Vesa, back to you. Excellent. Thank you, David, on that one. Now, uh, quick updates on the event side of the house. Uh, so the Edugon uh, 365 Edugon Seattle is happening actually this week. Um, we already, well, I've already met a few people who are flying over to Seattle today um, to, as part of my day-to-day -day weekly uh, meetings as well. So that's happening this week. So if you are in Seattle or in the West Coast uh, in the US, please drop by uh, over there to meet up Microsoft employees and also community members there. Then there's the Chicago happening later this year at October 13th to November 3rd. We also have the Microsoft Power Platform Conference happening in Las Vegas on October 3rd to 5th on 2023. A lot of, lot of cool uh, uh, 
presenters and a lot of cool uh, topics and announcements coming up on there as well. On top of these kind of a primary conferences or bigger conferences, so to say, we have a lot of lot of a bit smaller conferences and events happening across the world. Uh, so, and you can find all of those from the communitydays.org. Just quickly looking in here, we have USA, Canada, Czechs, uh, Australia, and and a lot of France and and so on. And Poland uh, mentioned as the event location. So you do not need to necessarily travel. It might be that closer to you, within your home city, there is a local event available which you should join uh, to meet up the other community members as well. And some of these events are also virtual, so you don't have to necessarily uh, go outside of your computer. So you can stay in your computer. Well, you're not in the computer, but you know what I mean at that. Anyway, quick recap on the news, what's happening. And not a lot of news happening within the August at this point yet from Microsoft's side. Uh, I think we're gearing up for a uh, lot of, lot of cool announcements happening later in the August, uh, sorry, in autumn. Uh, but we did have a Teams toolkit for Visual Studio Code update with the new AI chatbot template. Uh, announcement coming up earlier this week, which is really, really cool. There was also a new Teams toolkit for Visual Studio release with exciting features for .NET developers, and John is going to show that one uh, later today. Uh, there was a really great uh, blog post related on safe cost and drive efficiency on the next generation AI in the front line with Microsoft Teams, and that's really for the frontline workers. Power Platform had a lot of uh, updates as well, uh, and then a few updates on the Microsoft Teams and in the SharePoint side. I will paste in all of the news in the chat, well, actually, um, now that I'm saying that, thank you, David, for pasting in all of the news within the chat uh, from the from the presentation notes. Sorry, David, I didn't notice that. Thank you for that. Now, before we go to the actual stars of today, uh, let's do a quick crew photo. Um, so, um, if you are willing, uh, enable the video, and I will start the Camtasia, and we will grab a GIF animation out of that. I will move uh, the crew photo in here, and we have 50 seats on the room. I'm, uh, we, I think we published already publicly that we will enable to have the room even bigger than 50, but right now it's limited still in 50. So 50 seats in the room. Let's see how we're filling in. Uh, maybe I'll come there as well as on enabling my camera. Hopefully that doesn't pixelate things. There I am, the front row. Hey, cool. Uh, so I will put the recording on. Uh, so three, two, one, and let's do some hand waving, everybody. Awesome to have you on a call. Excellent. So Mart, I can see Martin doing exactly what is needed. There's a lot of other things. We know. <laughs> Excellent. Everybody knows how this is done. Brilliant, brilliant. Awesome to have you on a call. And thank you for that. And we'll grab a GIF animation out of that and getting that shared within the social media. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, let's actually then go to the actual stars of the day, uh, which are uh, our Hack Microsoft Teams Global Hackathon winners uh, from Rapid Circle. And then we'll move uh, from there with Luca and Alex and then John Miller. But Robert Martin or Shrosti, I think one of you will start sharing your screen and then we we'll move forward from there. Yes, thank you, Fessa. Um, I will do uh, the presentation. Uh, uh, wow, what's this? Yeah. I will. Excellent. Yep, Stop we, have, we can see the screen. Take it away. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for having us. Um, I will start. Uh, uh, with first introducing ourselves. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, we did the hackathon together uh, with Srishti uh, Shah. She's cloud consultant uh, from India uh, within the Rapid Circle, uh, together with Martin Fischer, his business consultant uh, within Rapid Circle, and me and myself, uh, Robert. Uh, I'm a principal consultant and also MVP. Uh, and also working within Rapid Circle. So, um, yeah, what we're going to talk today is. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, first, some things globally around the team global hack. Uh, we only have 50 minutes, so I try to keep it uh, uh, as fast as possible. And uh, we uh, also try to do some demo and and. Uh, uh, some 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 codes uh, review on, on what what what, did, what we did within the uh, uh, meeting app uh, we we built. So uh, well, first we're going to uh, into more into the Teams global hack. Then we 
go into more okay what was our scenario we built um, then we go into more some into the some techniques we used like the uh, the live share SDK we used uh, and some of those features uh, within that uh, and in the end we give a, a, a short demo so uh yeah for Everyone uh, who don't know uh, about the Teams Global Hack, the Teams Global Hack uh, was a global hackathon uh, run from June 1st till June 15th. Um, and it was on creating a, an, apps, uh, an app for Microsoft Teams. Um, there were some specific uh, uh, categories like AI, uh, productivity, um, but you could just uh, uh, any kind of app for teams was feasible to, to add. Um, we thought, well, a lot of people will jump on the AI uh, uh, kind of things, uh, which was uh, introduced during build. Uh, but there were also some other uh, nice uh, new uh, features uh, uh, yeah, over there uh, on, on build. Uh, uh, so we thought, let's build something around the live share SDK, because we think this will really change how you can collaborate uh, during meetings and within your apps uh, uh, around that. Uh, so uh, yeah, if you would like to know more uh, around the, 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 the global hack, there's a link uh, within the presentation. We will share that later on. Um, and you can find more about uh, it, but also find all the, the solutions. Uh, there were around 60 solutions uh, uh, during the hack uh, created. So uh, yeah. You can find out more about them there and uh, go take a look there. So yeah, our live patient review app, uh, what, what, what did we actually uh, build? Uh, we built a Microsoft Teams meeting app. Um, and yeah, we were thinking about, okay, can we grab a real live uh, scenario uh, uh, we can support with these new techniques? Um, so yeah, we, we thought about um, we, we're pretty much doing things within the healthcare. Um, so yeah, Martin came up with a, a really great scenario around uh, multidisciplinary consultation meetings, uh, which uh, are meetings which takes place within hospitals uh, in a physical room. And during those meetings, uh, yeah, the, the doctors discuss multiple cases mostly around four to six patients and uh, yeah uh, they go uh, through all those patients uh, what treatment uh, do they need or do they need change of medication or uh, through procedures which needs to be followed or other things um, and yeah those meetings uh, with 10 specialists or uh, around that that can take pretty much time around a few hours and and uh, one of the key challenges they 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 have around that is that those doctors are are often uh, uh, yeah need to leave the room because they have emergencies they have to go to and uh, yeah we thought what could we do to to support that and would it be great if those doctors could stay in the meeting while they're going to an emergency maybe on their phone or get back into the meeting afterwards and still see what has been uh, talked about, uh, etc. So yeah, if you want more information, there's also a link to uh, the Microsoft Sample Solution Gallery where it's uh, uploaded to, so you can find more uh, uh, around uh, it there. And of course, we will show uh, some more later on in the demo. Uh, so yeah, as I said, one of the things we've used within uh, the, the our solution is the Live Share SDK. And yeah, for uh, all of you who don't know uh, around the Live Share SDK, uh, it was introduced uh, uh, during a build uh, last May, and uh, the Live Share SDK is an, an SDK designed to transform the Teams apps into collaborative multi-user experiences. Uh, but without uh, writing any dedicated backend code. Um, so yeah, with Live Share, you can uh, your users can co-watch, co-create, and co-edit during meetings. 
Um, it seamlessly uh, integrates with the Fluid Framework. And in the next slide, I will elaborate a little bit more on the Fluid Framework. Um, the, the live share uh, uh, within Teams uh, is uh, providing you with a, a fully free uh, managed and ready to use uh, Azure Fluid Relay. Uh, that's a resource within Azure. Um, uh, supporting the Fluid Framework uh, service. Um, yeah, the Live Share SDK itself uh, consists of three three primary packages: uh, the Live Share Core, the Live Share Media, and the Live Share Canvas. Um, um, we only use the Live Share Core and the Live Share Canvas. Um, yeah, so in the Core and the Canvas have multiple. Uh, um, yeah features and, and, and uh, objects you can use uh, to, to really have that collaboration and, and live updating uh, um, within your applications. So for instance, you, that there's a live share client, which makes it really easy to, for you to uh, um, yeah, connect to, to the Fluid Framework and Fluid Framework containers and create them. Um, and yeah, with with the Azure Fluid Relay, you 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 get uh, you don't have to worry about all the plumbing around security and and, and things like that. Uh, it's it's all in your own tenant. Um, everyone within the meeting has automatically uh, uh, access to that container, so all that security etc. is uh, uh, yeah taken away for you, and that that's really uh, a great thing around it. Um, yeah, there are all those things you could use within it, but it uh, also leverages all the uh, uh, features of the Fluid Framework, uh, where you can have shared maps, uh, 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 where uh, to to share your state uh, and your state objects uh, within your application and to all the clients connected to it. Um, another thing we uh, used was was a canvas. Uh, so the live share SDK also has a, has a live canvas, uh, something like uh, the the, the uh, uh, how do you call it the the whiteboard uh, <laughs> where you can ink on and, and stuff like that. Uh, you have a laser pointer and uh, things like that uh, to your uh, proposal, and uh, yeah, you also have a real time mouse cursor with user info, for instance, and you can build. So yeah, the, the Fluid Framework, uh, as I said, that Azure Fluid Relay is a managed offering for the Fluid Framework that helps develops to build uh, real-time collaborative experiences and replicate states across uh, uh, connected JavaScript clients. Uh, and the Microsoft Whiteboard, uh, Loop, and OneNote are all examples of apps built with the Fluid Framework today and using that Azure Fluid Relay. Um, so yeah, as I said, um, the the uh, uh, the Azure Fluid Relay is is there for you, uh, so you don't have to deploy anything to Azure uh, around that. Um, and yeah, it really helps to uh, replicate that state. So uh, as you can see uh, on the screen, uh, there's uh, if I click this remove button. Uh, all the other users see that that user is removed, for instance, and you can really replicate that state change to all your clients. Uh, and it's really low latency, so it's really quick uh, in, 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 in updating all those clients. OK, um, for the time, I'm going through a little bit quicker because we only have 15 minutes. Uh, there are some things like live presence. Um, where you can have the, the state of the user and see the mouse cursor uh, for from the all users. Um, also, the live presence contains uh, current meeting user roles. Uh, we also uh, use it within the application uh, to see uh, where we can also hide certain things, like uh, so only the organizer is able to do certain things within the application, etc. Um, and as I said, the live canvas where you can have inking, 
uh, mouse cursor, uh, but also uh, the laser pointer, which is really uh, handy, etc. Let's switch to the demo. I've already set up uh, a meeting where I've added our uh, uh, custom map. Uh, as you can see here, it's the live patient review. I already opened it. It's connected to the Fluid uh, uh, container. And uh, as you can see here, uh, I have two different users. But this user is not the organizer and doesn't see anything yet. And uh, this is the organizer, and he has the option to uh, add new patients. So yeah, we can add FESA. Was Luca also in? And John is also in. So as you can see, I'm adding new patients here, and instantly, real time, the other app is updated there. Um, because I'm the organizer, I can also remove uh, uh, users here. Um, we use the the, the live presence uh, object there. And that gives us back uh, every user within the meeting and its role. So we use that role to hide certain things within the application. Um, we can say, OK, we go to the next patient, etc. That's what the organizer can do. And we can also share the patients to the stage. And now you can see it's a little bit squeezed. We need some styling uh, here and there for the for some screen sizes, uh, but uh, normally you see it a little bit wider. Um, and what we can do within the application here is uh, add some feedback. So uh, some feedback for Fessa. and each user can do that. So we decided that each user can add feedback. Uh, and maybe uh, another user uh, is, is called back uh, to an emergency uh, and comes back later and, and can see, OK, what, what has been discussed, uh, but also can already add uh, some uh, feedback for John here. Uh, and uh, do that already and then or come back later, etc. Yeah, you can really, uh, yeah, do, do those scenarios like we did, we've did. we discussed for this uh, uh, live patient read. We also add an, an option to add an image where you can uh, choose a file. And uh, yeah, as you can see on the right side, uh, you can see I am there pointing. So the other users see is seeing what I'm doing and I can just ink on it. And uh, yeah, I can also say uh, I want a laser pointer. And uh, you see now a live laser pointer here. Seeing, OK, hey, that's great. So yeah, that's uh, uh, our scenario and, and what we did. Um, I'm pretty much almost out of time. So uh, I have uh, uh, also some code things prepared. Uh, so I'm not sure if I can go on a little bit. Um, we have a, a fluid live share. Um, and yeah, if, if Robert, you look into really, Robert, sorry, let's be really fast in here because we do have two demos and we need to stop on yeah. hour. So, but key is the, the scenario then, anyway. So. Yeah, that then then I'll, I'll skip uh, uh, the code uh, uh, walkthrough. Um, thank you everyone uh, uh, for having us and uh, I hope uh, you liked uh, our uh, yeah, our winning hackathon uh, solution. Thank you. Excellent, awesome, awesome stuff, Robert. Thank you for that. Um, and again, the code is available in the GitHub. We shared that in the chat. Hopefully, you were able to access that. We'll add a, a link to the uh, recordings as well um, for those who cannot access the chat. If you cannot access that, so just in case, uh, the code is available, so we can uh, you can access that. But really, really awesome. I, I love the center, uh, the B, the C, you know, demo setup here. Uh, the storytelling is is really, really good. So thank you, Robert, on that one.
awesome stuff. Yeah, great, thank you. Cool, uh, let me then share my screen because um, we will, me, Luca and Alex, we're gonna talk about uh, introduction on the new features and capabilities within SharePoint Framework 1.18. <coughs> And, and we have 15 minutes on this one. Alex is going to do a quick demo as well in, in the selection, um, and then we'll move into the last demo of the day. So first of all, uh, let's recap some of the basics. So SharePoint Framework uh, is the easiest way to build your enterprise solutions in Microsoft 365. So it's basically uh, provides you capabilities like automatically hosting the code. Um, you can easily, there's native uh, single sign-on. You don't need to worry about anything. It's using industry standard tooling. You can use Vue, Angular, uh, React, whatever you want. Um, and your code is automatically, again, as I said, hosted. So you don't need to worry about where to set up all of that hosting infrastructure. Again, if it's not a, that's not a massive deal for you, that's okay, um, but it's an option for you to build experiences in Microsoft 365. You can build experiences uh, through SharePoint, Microsoft Viva, Microsoft Teams, and Outlook and Microsoft 365 app so nowadays with SharePoint Framework. The name is a bit misleading, um, but it, it is anyway code which is hosted technically by SharePoint, so therefore the name of SharePoint Framework kind of makes sense. Now, on this demo, we wanted to talk about uh, what's part of the 1.18 uh, release as part of the GA, um, and then a bit about what's coming in the future as well. So there's a lot of lot of stuff uh, coming in the future. Uh, so 1.18, uh, I guess I'm going to recap in here, and then I'm going to ask a few questions from Luca. So first of all, uh, on 1.18, uh, which is planned to happen uh, at GA happening as in general availability, as in production ready in September 2023. So within pretty soon, uh, it will have a new template options for Viva Connection, uh, Fluent UI V8 as the default for new projects. Uh, so we're updating the Fluent UI uh, as that's getting updated on the Microsoft 365. There's API to support dark mode in the Viva Connection mobile, other new adjustments across the technical stacks, and then of course issues uh, getting fixed uh, based on the community and community or customer and partner input uh, take MS SPFX issues. So if you find anything on about the SPFX, please always submit an issue there uh, so we can actually address that within upcoming releases. As said, the general availability happens in September. Now, related on 1.18, um, as I said, uh, it's primarily from a UX perspective, focusing on the Viva Connection side and giving more options over there. And we kind of actually cover a few slides later and after the demo, uh, what's latest on Viva Connection kind of a briefly um, and what does that mean. Also related on um, related on SPFX, uh, we will actually roll out, I guess look at the same time, the card designer plus plus, which isn't technically SharePoint framework, but it's part of the, the SharePoint framework uh, kind of a technical stack. And that provides a new way to build no code, low code experiences for, for, for Viva connection. We will have a demo on that one, by the way, next week. Am I missing something, Luca, on 1.18? No, I think no. Uh, I don't think they're missing anything. Uh, well, just just a couple of things. So don't get uh, don't get stuck on the card designer plus plus name. That's actually, I mean, rightfully, as I said that here is a name that we're using internally. I'm not sure if we're using card designer plus plus is just card designer. And as Vesa said, it's just like a way for empower uh, operators to build even more powerful and functional cards without requiring custom code. And yes, we will have a demo on that. The plan is to release that around the same time when we are releasing 118. Yes. Cool. And then I'm just gonna do the, the questions, typical question what we get on this side. So no changes on the Node.js side or React or any of those technical dependencies at 1.18? No. Is that true? No. So that's a good way to, to know. Uh, so for now, uh, there's no changes and we're looking into doing that within the future versions. Uh, if you're wondering what is the dynamics in here, Luca is the primary product manager, uh, PM uh, of the SPFX and I'm but well, I'm your lovely assistant, right Luca? We and then Luca is the... We don't say that out loud on the mic. Oh, that's true. Yes, and Alex on the room is the engineer working on, on SPFX as well. So that's all good. Um, cool. Now let's jump on on doing a quick update on on what are those template options and how what can that can be uh, what can you enable with those uh, within the Viva connection and Alex is ready to do a quick demo on that one and then I'll recap uh, some of the changes which are coming in the Viva connection and also on the SharePoint uh, side as well. Alex, let's jump yep. on your screen. Can you see it? Yep, all good. We can see your screen. Perfect. Awesome. So. 
let me go here. I need to remove this one. So this is a sample from my like demo tenant. As you can see, there are three cards in the first uh, row that are pretty new. Uh, they showcase new capabilities that we will release with uh, 118. Now uh, you, ha you have ability to provide uh, text input in your cards. So previously we all uh, had text only or like text and image, this kind of stuff, but the cards were uh, pretty much static. The first level of cards card views. Now you can provide text input. You can put it in the uh, body of the card as on the uh, first card or in the footer based on your scenarios. And additionally, we are providing a new template called uh, uh, search card template, uh, which uh, provides you again. It's not a text input; it's search box, but uh, ID the same. And uh, in the footer, uh, you have um, extra component uh, uh, that uh, looks like a persona card, but it's actually not a persona card, or it's not tied to persona or users. You can use this card for uh, any search scenarios, for like uh, documents or um, some uh, other. LOB data, uh, but yeah, it's uh, pretty uh, configurable and uh, I'll show you that in the code. Uh, but yeah, basically 118 is focused on providing more flexibility, more components in the uh, card views. It doesn't mean that we allow uh, custom components like React or something like that. No, we are still in charge of uh, uh, what's available, what can be placed in the card view, uh, but we are providing uh, more options to the uh, developers. And let me jump to the code here. And uh, I'll show you the uh, difference. So uh, if previously, and let me make it a little bit bigger. So uh, previously, uh, when you create a template for this or that uh, card view or ACE, uh, you will extend your class from specific base class like primary text or basic text or image. And based on that, you have this or that uh, functionality on, these, on the card view. We are changing that completely. Now we are not focusing on the uh, templates. We are focusing on the components that can be uh, placed in the uh, template. So each card will be now extended from base components card view. And instead of providing like uh, some data in there, you will need to override the card view parameters uh, property where you basically using JSON to specify uh, what components you place in the header, in the body, in the footer, and so on and so forth. Uh, so again, it's not like you can place any component in any place. We have a set of permutations that we allow, and uh, as part of the uh, GA documentation, we will list all these permutations for you to use. But yeah, it's it's pretty simple. So we we have like card bar for the icon and title. We have header where you can place some text in the body. For this example, it's a search card template. So in the body, you have search box and in the footer you have search footer and that's it basically and that's what you're having from the uh, template itself so again it's pretty easy we did a lot of uh, job for you to kind of start not from uh, nothing but uh, you already have some hello world example that you can uh, play around and everything is available in uh, beta and as Vesa said uh, we will do the RC soon and GA in the September. Uh, additionally to that, uh, extra focus on the um, uh, Diva connections. So yes, as mentioned, we'll provide ability to get the uh, mode, the uh, dark mode or uh, theme mode in the uh, Viva connections mobile. So in that case, you can correctly uh, specify, for example, images in your quick views to fit in this or that theme. And uh, one extra thing that we will do, it was not on the uh, slide, but it just got merged. We'll bump the TypeScript version to 4.7. It's not a big bump, but still we are trying to be more or less uh, up to date. I know it's not V5, but still. Uh, and that's probably all I have. 
Excellent. Let me go on the slides and bit of elaborate on, on some of the things what uh, uh, Alex was showing. So first of all, that was really on the Viva connection side of the house. Of course, with SPFX, like we covered uh, on the previous slides, you can build different experiences for SharePoint and Microsoft Teams and Outlook and so on. On the Viva connection side, there's going to be a lot of, lot of new announcements uh, relatively soon. Uh, so there's a lot of investments coming from Microsoft on the Microsoft Viva side. Uh, some of the announcements which have been already done, which are really, really cool in the context uh, kind of a related technologies in SPFX is the announcements in Microsoft Viva Connection. Uh, so that's coming up relatively soon as well. So you can see on the left side, so there's an, a notifications which are working. You can do that, those announcements uh, as a pop-up, so to say, in the Viva Connection. And then you can see on the third, third picture, you can see the store 120 will operate under reduced hours tomorrow. So and so, so you can actually have this kind of a frontline worker first messaging which is targeted for the mobile experience. And of course, all of this is functioning well in the desktop uh, UX as well. On the right side, uh, that's the multiple view connection experiences in Microsoft, in Microsoft Teams, uh, just to show you that. So basically the idea here is that as many companies and, and customers have a multiple organizations and divisions, they can actually build their own dedicated uh, view connection experiences based on their employees and they're based on the roles and, and personas and all of that. So you can actually have multiple set of uh, different experiences and video connection experiences in a single tenant. And that's a really, really cool feature. Now, I also wanted to recap and kind of remind uh, one of the cool things which we announced uh, in Las Vegas earlier this week, uh, not this week, this year. Uh, you know, week and year, nobody cares. And the, uh, earlier at uh, Vekas in this year uh, was the upcoming updates on a SharePoint site. So making the SharePoint portals uh, more flexible and, and more, more branding capabilities. All of this can be uh, also extended in future using SharePoint framework. So the SharePoint framework is certainly not going to go away. It is evolving and we are evolving that based on the feedback what we're giving, uh, getting from you as well. So the pictures what you're seeing right now here are, the, are from the video which we showed also in Las Vegas related on the plans and how the SharePoint might look like uh, as we start rolling out the new modern uh, SharePoint uh, portal features. So really, really cool opportunities there as well. And again, extensibility here will keep on going or be, keep on being SharePoint framework uh, with new options and capabilities uh, as well. And of course, we're updating the Teams uh, side as well. So the Teams, Teams JavaScript SDKs and all of those are getting evolved uh, as we are updating and new versions on there. So all of that uh, stays up to date, so to say. Cool. So that's a quick recap on the SharePoint framework uh, 1.18. So what's in 1.18 primarily on the Viva connection side 1.19. We cannot yet go to the details what's in there and 1.20. Uh, there's going to be more focus on other areas as well. 1.18 primarily on the Viva connection. But next we're going to then jump on the um, on the John Miller side and we're going to talk about uh, the what's new in the Teams toolkit for Visual Studio 2022. John, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Excellent. Let me. Uh, Every oh, single you know time somebody calls me sir, I'm always feeling so old. Um, as because I'm not a native, you know, to US based person. It's all, no, no, call me dude. It's okay. Oh, and that because you are better. old. <laughs> Thank you, Luca. You no, it's, me, a, it's a sign of respect, not age. So you consider are, it you a compliment. Age, uh, can say that. <laughs> We Europeans feel always so bad about that, um, but yeah, thank you, John. Sure. Um, so I'll, I'll share my screen in a second, but just wanted to say hello and uh, share a little bit about what I'm going to be talking about. So uh, this morning I'll show you the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. And if you're not familiar, uh, the Teams Toolkit is our tools for helping you develop and build and publish and uh, all sorts of things that you'll probably get into as you make Teams apps. Uh, if you're a .NET developer inside of VS. We also have these tools in VS Code, which I've also um, jumped on here and shared before, uh, but we're going to look at VS today and see what we're doing for .NET developers. Uh, so let me uh, get started. I'll share my screen and show you some areas where you can get started. So I have a couple things up. Um, first thing I wanted to show you is how do you even get the tools? Um, so the way you install the Teams Toolkit is inside the VS installer. Um, in the ASP.NET web development workload thing, if you have that installed, there's an option over here uh, called Microsoft Teams Development Tools. So if you check that box, um, you'll get 
couple megabyte download, and that installs our extension. So once you have that, then you can jump back into VS and you'll get this project template. So this is the Teams app project template. And you can create a new project and you'll get a couple options. So these are the templates that we have to get you started uh, with a Teams app. If you're not familiar with a Teams app, um, you don't really need any of these things because a Teams app is really just a JSON file. It just kind of defines some metadata about how you want to extend the Teams client. So those are things like if you want to embed a website inside of Teams, or if you want to create a conversational experience using a bot, or you want to um, ex extend the chat compose area with some kind of special uh, search functionality or some kind of action to do something, um, you can do that as well. And all that's expressed inside of a JSON file and you point to the URLs and things of, of these hosted experiences that run those. And then there's other some dependencies that you need, like if you're going to do a conversational thing, you might need a bot. And then so you need to go down the rabbit hole of bot framework and figure all that out. Um, so the Teams Toolkit tries to help reduce some of the tediousness of the configuration for those things so you can just jump right into your code and focus more on your app. So we have these templates to jumpstart you and those experiences. Um, and so we've kind of opinionated um, where how you can get started, but it's all pretty flexible if you want to change it later. Uh, so for example, so these templates are based on scenarios that we've seen um, folks start with. So there's the concept of what we call a notification bot. And that's basically um, if you have some data and you want to send it into Teams inside of a chat or a channel and, and show an adaptive card. So you want to show some type of uh, little UI inside of Teams with um, maybe links or text or clickable things, um, whatever you whatever you want to do, um, then you can use a notification bot template to get started with that. Or if you want to kind of do it the reverse way and type something in the chat and then execute something in a remote, you know, uh, internal process somewhere, you can do a command bot. So this helps you set up with a Teams chat command, and then you can um, run it, you know, run this web app where, however you want and, and do whatever you want. And then um, similar thing with a workflow bot. This is a conversational kind of back and forth. Um, if you want to do something like a Q&A or um, like a ticketing system or something like that, you want to show an adaptive card with some kind of action that someone can do or, or people in a chat can do. And then a tab is an embedded website. And then a message extension is a way to expo uh, extend the chat compose area uh, with it. I think this example does um, both. It does both a search based message extension so you can do a custom search. I think the example shows how to query NPM um, and, and show like a list of the packages inside of Teams and then it pastes an adaptive card with you know whatever you want to customize that. Uh, so. I already, to save some time, I already created some of these. So we don't have to wait for VS to scaffold this stuff. Um, so I'll just open, uh, this is a, I think a workflow bot template. So all of the templates start out kind of the same. Let me know if you, uh, if anyone needs me to zoom in or anything like that, I can bump up some fonts, but I've tried to scale things pretty large. Okay. By default, go ahead. No, oh, all good, all good. So. Okay, great. Thanks, Vesa. What you get by default is um, you get a uh, .NET project. I think this is a web API project. And we have uh, some setup in here for the Teams related stuff. Um, so there's some configuration for it. Since this uses a bot, there's some configuration using the bot framework SDK. So all of that's in here. Uh, there's also uh, for .NET developers, we have an SDK called the Teams FX SDK. And this is some higher level abstractions built on top of the bot SDK uh, to make some of these scenarios a little easier, um, like commands and responding with adaptive cards. Uh, there's a lot of boilerplate needed to do those things. So we have some abstractions in our SDK that you can optionally use uh, to make these scenarios a little easier. So I'll give you an example of that. Um, for example, we have this interface for implementing uh, handling commands. So you can just define uh whatever the trigger is for that in this case it's do stuff and this one is used as a response to an adaptive card to create kind of a sequence of um, actions and i'll show you what that looks like in a second and then you can define how you want to respond with that adaptive card in this case it's going to replace the card instead of posting a new one and then it's going to send the actual card which is handled here 
and then it uses the adaptive card SDK. So there's a .NET SDK for that as well. So you can uh, define your adaptive card with JSON, and then it has a bunch of uh, .NET classes to uh, wrap all that. So let me show you what that looks like. To do this, uh, to debug this right from VS, you do have to run some type of tunnel because this is um, Azure Bot Framework needs a way to communicate between Teams and itself and then your local machine. So new in um, the Teams Toolkit for 17.7 in VS is we have support for dev tunnels. So you can, if you haven't seen this yet, you can create tunnels directly inside VS uh, for not just for Teams Toolkit, for anything. Um, so I've created one, I've just named it Teams Dev here and I've already selected it. So when I have this selected, our extension will have this menu here, Teams Toolkit. When you right click on the project or you go to the project menu, you'll get a Teams Toolkit menu and you have some options here of how to interact with your uh, project uh, with Teams. So the main thing with our toolkit is you need some way to um, create these resources. Right now I've, I've scaffolded the project and it's just a .NET project, but Teams doesn't know that this is an app yet. So I have a manifest here. Um, there's a manifest already here. And there's all this information and all this metadata about how I've wanted to uh, extend the platform. Um, and you don't have to get into all this, but eventually you probably will learn it and you can go in and customize it as you need to. But Teams needs to know about this. So the way you do that with, uh, with VS is use this menu command for now. So you just prepare the app dependencies and you sign in with an account. So this would be your M365 account. This is the tenant where you want to run this. And I've using a dev program account. So if you can't uh, run custom maps inside of your tenant, then we recommend you use a dev program account. So it's a free account to get your own subscription, your own developer identity, and kind of a sandboxed environment to run these apps. And when you click this, um, the toolkit is going to run through a bunch of tasks to set up um, all the dependencies needed for the platform. So this is registering a new app ID uh, for Teams. And uh, in this case, it's also creating an Azure AD application for the bot, which is required for bot framework to work, and, and a bunch of other steps. And all of those steps are expressed in this YAML file. So if I open this, I can go through and the toolkit, uh, the output menu here jumped up and showed. So you can see this actually shows all the things it did. So it goes through all these steps um, and all these steps are expressed inside of this YAML file. So something new that we did um, in the past year is all of the toolkit actions. So everything that um, your project needs to run and do whenever you're either running locally inside of VS or if you want to use this as a provision and deployment solution, um, you can also express uh, those in this other file. So there's two YAML files, one for your local kind of setup and one for your remote. And all the actions are expressed here. So the, it kind of goes through these different life cycles. So we've opinionated some things that you'll go through, um, provisioning and deploying resources and then publishing your app. So I've gone through and defined, um, there's a provision step here. And this, uh, you can think of this like a task runner, something, um, you know, I think I most think of it like Gulp or something like that um, and other projects. Um, could think of like MS Build, I guess. Um, but basically you have a bunch of these, uh, what we call actions, and it looks a lot like a GitHub Actions file or an Azure DevOps pipeline file. And we have all these predefined um, kind of actions uh, to do Teams related stuff. So we've tuned them all for all the things that you would need to do for Teams Dev. You can mix and match um, whatever you want these task runners to do. And so I'm going to create a Teams app and uh, save that in a, as an environment variable and just go through all the steps I need. So I need a Teams app. I need an, um, a bot and a, I need an AAD app for my bot. And then um, there's some other specific stuff in here about uh, just putting it in the app development JSON file to make it a little easier to work with .NET projects. So we have an action to do that because we found developers often want to do that kind of stuff. And then uh, create a bot framework registration. So this is normally you'd have to jump through a bunch of portals to do this. You have to go to uh, the bot framework portal or um, or the Azure portal and also the Teams developer portal and create all this stuff manually and then paste it into these files. But instead, you can automate all this with just these uh, tasks. All that stuff, all the outputs of these get saved in environment files. So if I look in my local environment file, here's all the outputs. So when I ran that prepare command, I get my app ID, my tenant ID, um, all this stuff. Um, here's, here's the tunnel URL I created. All that gets saved as an environment file. 
if I don't want to use Teams Toolkit to do a piece of this, I can uh, I can just delete some of this or comment it out. I could just delete these and say, hey, I don't want to create a Teams app. I already have an app ID. My, my admin gave me one that's all configured and been blessed and everything. Um, I could just delete this or I can just go into the environment file and just um, paste it in here. And then uh, what this helps you do is it helps you have a single manifest file that you can keep, which is here, and then use these environment uh, variables to help with replacement. So the toolkit can help you manage, like if you want to create a local one, and then maybe you want to run this in a QA or staging or production and dev, all sorts of other remote environments, you can have one manifest file and just use replacement strings like this. And then it just reads through the environment files and you just name them however you want. And those are kind of like your environments. So the toolkit helps you manage that. Uh, okay, so now that that's running and I've, I already ran prepare. Um, so Teams knows about my app. I got my app IDs and everything. Um, we can just uh, hit de start debugging and it will launch Teams in a browser uh, for the for the tenant for the account that I signed in with. And it'll go right to the install um, app uh, window. So we'll wait for that to run. And let me grab the browser and bring that over. I think it's going to pop up a new browser for me. There we go. So you can set breakpoints, um, step through this just like you would expect in any other .NET project. Um, it's just running as a web app right now. All right, so Teams, is it's already logged me in. Um, if you do this the first time, you, um, you'll probably get a, a login screen. I've already done this, so it's already remembered my identity uh, for Teams. So I'll go ahead and add my app. And then it will jump right over. And I've already ran this app a couple of times. So uh, this template just defines a single command. Um, so you just type in hello world. And let me make sure, I don't know if it matters, but go ahead and just do it the same. Type in hello world. And then this is a workflow. So you get the first response is a card and it will give you one button to do something. So we'll just wait for my response here. So there's my card. Uh, this is part of the template. I get an action to do something, so I'll go, and go ahead and click it. And then that handler I showed you, that the way it's set up is to replace that card. So there's no new card here, and it just updated it to a new card that, that just is an act. It says, hey, you click the button. Um, so you can imagine you could start chaining these things and create some type of workflow, um, whether it's an approval system or a ticketing system or something like that, and you can customize that all with the adaptive card SDK, um, however you want to display these things. So that's what the toolkit does for you. Um, places to get started, let me jump over here. Uh, in the docs, you can get started here. We have a, a section for VS Code, which is over here, but make sure you're in the VS section. And then you can go through, and this gives a good example of kind of what I, what I talked about. These are the kind of the opinions we express of, um, you create a project, you have some development, and then you can optionally choose to use the tools to provision and deploy. We didn't get into that here, um, but we do scaffold you a bunch of bicep files so you can host these in Azure very easily. And the toolkit has commands to help you with that. And we jump over here. Also, we have a lot of the project is open source on GitHub. So it's a good place to file issues. Um, you can start a discussion. Um, the VS extension is not open source, um, but the rest of the project is. So you can take a look at here, um, like the SDKs are open source, the samples are all available, the templates are in here uh, for .NET and for JavaScript and TypeScript. And uh, this is where all the this is where all the planning and communication and issues happen. So feel free to jump in there if you have any questions. And I think that's my time. So thanks for listening. Uh, hopefully you got some use out of that and looking forward to feedback from .NET developers. Uh, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Excellent, really, really cool stuff. So let me jump in here. Uh, we're right on the last minute. Thank you, John, on that one. Awesome, awesome stuff. And good to have that uh, simplification of development. There was good comments on the chat as well on that. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Luca, Alex, and John on the great demos of today. Uh, let me jump on the on the closing slides. Uh, and next week uh, we have another 
Hack Together Microsoft Teams Global Hackathon uh, winner, this time AI category winner, uh, showcasing Knowledge Quest Teams bot. Uh, that's Nandil Smita, Kunian Siddharth doing that one. And then we have Luca and Nick Babe talking about the introduction of new Viva Connection Advanced Card Designer functionality. We mentioned that today, and that is really, really, really cool stuff. Uh, so you don't want to miss that one. Uh, it empowers also end users or a, a more end user low code, no code scenarios. And then Gary Trinder is going to talk about bringing your existing Microsoft of Teams.net app to Teams Toolkit in Visual Studio 2022, kind of a follow up on John's discussion of today. Now, if you want to engage uh, with other people in the community, we also have our relatively new uh, official Discord server. So if you want to join in here, AKMS forward slash community forward slash Discord, and there's almost 400 people already in this Discord server, which is really, really cool. Not that many actions and questions, uh, but you're more than willing to use that, so more than welcome to use that and ask questions about anything related on Microsoft 365 development. We're also highly interested on the feedback, so we would really Really appreciate if you can actually provide us inputs related on uh, the call content, the structure and all of that. So what works and what doesn't work. And if you have suggestions related on how we can improve, all of that would be more than welcome. Uh, really, really appreciate if you would have a few minutes time uh, to answer on these things. Now, the recording will be available within 24 hours at Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community YouTube channel at Forbes AKMS Forbes Community Videos. Uh, follow us on Twitter or in LinkedIn. You will know uh, when the videos are available. Easiest way to actually do that is subscribing to the channel. Uh, the next call is on August 29th, as mentioned, at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Every single Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time, we will be here. That's it for now. Thanks everybody for joining. Thank you for the great presenters. Thank you for lively discussion in the chat and we'll be in touch. Cheers, have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.